Well, you taste Sunday. It's Lamid Nisan. It's the 30th day in the month of miracles <laughs> and the first of the head of the month of healing. We're doing the Hayyim Yayim of Chazayim and Achamav. Now, if you have a page and you can't find Chazayim and Achamav, turn your page over. You'll find it. Shabbos, the last entry. Chazayim and Achamav, Hei Tav Shem Gimel. Mevarchim Rishchidish Elo. We bless the head of the month of Elo. Amidas Kalatilim Bashkama. We say the entire Tilim early in the morning. And of course, early in the morning in Lubavitch is like in the afternoon. And Yei Misvados, it's a day for Fabregans. I want you to know, I just thought about this. What is the most frequently repeated thing in the entire Yei Yei? What's repeated now? Yei Bechlada, Yei Yei is very concise. It's our Rebbe, the Rebbe is Mr. Brevity. What idea is repeated now? Yei Yei more times? It may be this. It's repeated 13 times. Every single Shabbos Mavarachim that says this lie. Mevarchem achay de shalom, but by Tishri it's missing these words. But then it says, "Amidas galtinim bashkam." It's every chaydish, every single month. This instruction. Which other thing you have not yem yem twelve or thirteen times? The top. I can't think of it. Every shazavach. Yesterday I gave a shiur in the morning to the chavrin, whatever, to the men and women in the museum. So I always remind them it's Shabbos mevarchem, and you're not exempt from saying tilim because you can't pull on the kutatayin in the morning. The Rebbe says about saying Tilim and Shabbat Zavarchim, it's Negeziach Kinder and Kins Kinder. Saying Tilim and affects the, the spiritual health of your children, you, your children, your grandchildren. That's pretty, that's pretty, uh, as Rebbe Saul Jacobs would say, Vogik. It's, it's a lot. It carries a lot of weight. But this is a mini Chabad which the Fiyadik Rebbe revealed that in addition to saying Tilim as this divided Limea Chaydish, which he revealed in the year of his arrest. A little while on, he revealed also this meaning of saying Tilm Shabbos Mevarch. Shiurim, Chumash, and Eishvi, and Pirishashi, Tilm Kufchaf, and Kufla Medal, Tanya, Chezere, and Chutzaz Vedal. Chaydish Elo, the month of Elo is perfect for Chaydish Yen, of course. We're right on time, yeah? Chaydish Elo, the month of Elo. Pardon me. Hu Chaydish Hacheshben. It's the month of stack taking. Of, of, of keeping score, of evaluation. The Kamari Begashmi is just like physically. Hine, Habal Asik, every businessman. Begadei Shayi Yah Asik the boy. In order for his business to be as it needs to be, Viyitain Revach Rav, that it should produce much profit. It's necessary from time to time to take stock. And of course, the purpose of taking stock is not just to decide where I'm gaining money and where I'm losing money, but and to adapt, to correct all the things that are not right. Meaning to say, if you're a businessman and you're making a lot of money, but you're selling 100 products, 70 of those products are profitable, 15 of those profits are break, products are breaking easy, even, and 15 of those products you're losing money. So when you take a cheshben, the 15 you're losing money, you cancel, you stop selling them. No point in losing money. The 15 that you're breaking even, you either try to figure out a way to make a profit to them, or you decide that it's worth for you to sell these products without a profit so that people should come into the store and buy the other 70, whatever the cheshbenes are. But business people, if they're going to be successful, don't say, I'm successful more or less. <laughs> I want to be successful as much as possible. So you take stock. And when you see the areas of your business which are not doing as well as other parts, you correct them that they should also, either you cut them out, or you heal them and you correct them, they should also become profitable. So the Rebbe said that this is true in the business, it's certainly true in life. Kain who the same is also true in our spiritual labors and in our service of Akadosh Baruch Hu that periodically we take stock we make a cheshbon. Says the Rebbe, the Kalashana all year long, and he call Yisrael Eiskim Betayda Umitzvus and Bemitzvus Tevis. All year long we're busy with three things: Taira, Mitzvus, and Mitzvus Tevis. This is the Friedrich Rebbe. Friedrich Rebbe talks a lot about Mitzvus Tevis. Now exactly what is Midas Tevis? What's Midas Tevis? 
Midas Tevis. Midas Tevis means we should be a mensch clapping ourselves and therefore clapping other people. We should be honorable, you know. But they say, oh, a good person. And this is character. And the thing that you have to know about character is no one is born with a good character. Some people have an easier time at it. But everybody, if you don't work on your character, your character is not good. The opposite of good character is natural character, not bad. Natural. Nature is not perfect. That's just the way it is. In, the, in this Prat. In other ways, nature is very perfect. But the way the Eivish that made us is, he gave us Tchunas Anefesh, character traits. Some of them are good and some of them are not good. And the truth of the matter is, all of them are good on some occasions and all of them are not good on other occasions. Midas Tevis is refining that character, not leaving that character alone. So you bring the best of it. I think about this often. I think, I really do, I think about this often. I just climbed on a soapbox. I'll tell you when I get off. Americans want to be good, you know that? Amer it's very important. If you call an American a bad person, it bothers him. You call a Frenchman a bad person, he says, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad, but I'm not a fool. It's very important for Americans to be good. And we've come up with a whole bunch of very ingenious ways of being good. The best way for us to be good is to get the government to be good on our behalf. I want to give to DACA. Why should I have my pocket? It'll come from the government. I'll vote for the government that's going to give away my money to somebody else. And other creative ways like that. So there's a whole movement in this country, it's not new, that into kindness, it's into kindness. But it's the, the kindness that they're into is effortless kindness. I want to be kind, but it shouldn't be hard for me. And as a result of that, this kindness does not have any principle, doesn't have any parameters, no border. When is kind too kind? When is kind cruel? When is kind to one cruel to another? Those things are judgments. You're not going to judge. <laughs> Thou shalt not judge. You see that? I'm kind. You're not going to judge. If you're kind and you're not judging, the kindness can be so cruel. But you're not going to judge. I mean, well, I think about this so much. No person is naturally kind. He can tell himself he is. He can tell you he is. He can tell you that you're cruel because you're not as, you don't think like he thinks. There's no such thing as good midas betev. It doesn't mean that. If a person is kind, he worked on it. And if a person is kind, it cost. It's expensive. It's going to get cost. This is how I look at it. We have a movement within our civilization that's very strong, that's all about kindness. But it's all about kindness without including the me. I don't want to become a better person. I just want better for the world. So I radiate my kindness outward. That's how I think of it. And that's why it doesn't have any rules. It doesn't have any limits. And that's why it crosses over from kind to cruel, from kind to stupid. Because for kindness to be truly kind, it has to come from the person. And if it comes from the person, the person has to develop that character. And developing a character means working on self. Working on self means noticing one's flaws and faults. Not flaws and faults in how, if they have extra pounds. Flaw and faults of how they look at other people, which is a much more difficult thing to heal and to correct. But that's Midas Tevis. The Friedi Kedeba talks about Nochanan. Always. Nochanan, every chance he gets. The Friedi Kedeba divides life into three things. Torah, Mitzvahs, Midas Tevis. When was the last time he had such a division? This Torah, Mitzvahs and Tefillah, <laughs> right? That's Torah. Shleish et vala ba'ilam emit al Torah vala veidag milchas sadam. Here it's al Torah vala Mitzvahs vala Midas Tevis. It's fascinating. Anyway, I'm now officially getting off my soapbox. I'll probably go back to it next week, but let's move on. So I'm on the bottom of page, page base, fourth line in. Kain hu gam ba'veda ruchnis same is also in spiritual work. Ba'veda Hashem is baruch and our service of Hakadosh Baruch. The kol hashana a whole year hine. Call Yisrael Eskim, all year we're preoccupied with Teda, learning Teda, and doing mitzvahs, Uber Mides Tevis, and in good character, or to say it slightly differently, in bearing our character, in actually 
developing a goodness which requires us to examine ourselves. Says the Rebbe, this is doing a whole year. When Elul comes, but now you actually evaluate what's going on. Every single Jew and Jewess. Each one, according to his own measure. Whether he's a person who sits and learns Taito all day long and lives in a very protected environment. As well as the business person, the professional who lives in a tougher environment. And his religious struggles are more elementary. They're closer to the basics. But he also does what he needs to do in Torah and Mitzvahs and Midas Tevis, just like the Yesh of Eil does. Each one now takes stock. Tzrichim la says Chaz ben Tzedek has to make a righteous tabulation, an, an assessment, an evaluation, ben Nashim of their neshama, mikol asher over aleim, all that's transpired in their lives, ben Meshach during the passage, the, the, the year that passed. I want to tell you, I heard this from the Shlomo Zarchi, so I'm saying I was born in 1965. I never saw the Rebbe teach a nigma. My father used to describe it to me as a child, so I'm saying gesund. And uh, I'm very indebted for it, but I never saw it. Shlomo Zarchi was, he grew up, he was born at the right time. He was born, you know, whatever, Tav Shemches. He grew up with the Rebbe. The, the Rebbe is that, that generation, the Mamish, the Rebbe's children. So he was by many of the Nagunim, maybe all of them. And he once told me, I was sitting with him, when the Rebbe taught Stavya Pitu. It was one of the last Nagunim the Rebbe taught. I think it was the year before the year, Tavshach of Gimel. Stavya Pitu was a very hard Nigun to teach because Stavya Pitu is in Russian. It's actually Ukrainian. And the word Ukraine has a lot of meaning these days. Huh? And the, the Sidim didn't know the language. I told this to you recently. That after some chasteira, Chadikov came out with the words of Stavia Pitu written in Yiddish with phonetics, with the Kudis. And the presumption is that the Rebbe wrote it with Yad Kodesh. The Rebbe had a rule that a manuscript which he wrote that it wasn't a letter, you were not allowed to give away the original. Chadikov copied it and he probably destroyed it. The Rebbe used to want him to destroy those Kisva Yad Kodesh. I think Chadikov was the only secretary who followed that rule. All the kids we had, we have now. <laughs> Chadikov did what he was told. The Rebbe must have written up the words. Chadikov copied it over and then he destroyed, I'm assuming he destroyed it. Maybe we'll find it also. But it was before him. He gave it out. Because they didn't know the words. The Rosh Hashem, it was all Rosh Hashem then. They didn't recognize it. It was in a foreign language. And the Rebbe taught Stav Yapitu. Stav Yapitu was a modern day version of Nyezh Yeritz It's the same Teichen. Also, you have to have vodka. Bizin Kretschmer, until you get to the inn, you have to have vodka also. So the Stavia Peter was a similar toichen. It's, it's about work, Friday, and the rest, Shabbos, and you have to say lechaim, you have to have vodka, Bizin Kretschmer. But in the course of that nigan, you have the words Chesh Ben Tzedek in, in Hebrew, right? The Rebbe taught the nigan, he would sing it and sing it and sing it until people caught on, and then he would stop singing it. So, of course, you know this. You've heard this many times. The say there was, the Rebbe used to say, who is Yael, who is Mechitel HaShevki? Aleyem HaShalom. Zechenim Lebrach. They chapped the nigan the quickest. <laughs> the Rebbe once said, V'ireb Zalman Duch Manzok, Yael Chazer Gut HaNig, Yael Chazer Gut HaSich HaNamay Merechet. Rabbi Yael Khan was, was a genius. It was really a... a an, if he wasn't a Lubavitcher, he would have been a God of Israel. He was a giant. We don't know how great Rabbi Yael was because he served at the Rebbe's uh, pleasure. We don't, we don't understand Rabbi Yael Khan. We really do not know who he was in all ways. But he was incredibly musical. Incredibly musical. Oh, this, may, this I didn't know. Oh, about this particular nigan. Oh, it does have a thing of us. But Bechlau, when the Rebbe taught a nigan, he would ask, who is Yael, who is Meshach Talashevsky? And the Rebbe would, when the Rebbe saw the nigun, this my father described to me, he would stop giving mashke, and he would pause. And you would see him concentrate. He didn't just sing. There was a pause, a, a hesitation. And then the Rebbe would sing. And the Rebbe would sing it once, and sing it a second time, and sing it a third time. And the Rebbe, the Rebbe is, uh, if Rabbi Elkan is a genius, so what's the Rebbe? It's Ananda Mitzvah. The Rebbe learned the nigan when he heard it once. 
We did the little nigging and we learned it a hundred times. And the Rebbe would get impatient. He wouldn't get upset, but he would sort of laugh at how stupid we were, you know. No, you didn't get it yet, you know. And as soon as Yael and Meishu Tal they got it the first, always. The Rebbe would stop singing it. They would keep singing it. And the Rebbe would continue giving mashke, you understand. And the Rebbe would stop and correct them. That's how the it was. The Rebbe would teach the Nigan, whatever number of times it took, two times, four times, five times, the Yael Khan and the Meishu Tal Shevsky, Aleyam Hashom, they were the first, they took a Nigan quick, they have a Chosha Nigina. As soon as the Rebbe felt that they had the Nigan, the Rebbe would stop singing it, and then they would sing it. And the whole Yom Tif was the Nigan. The whole Yom Tif, the whole Sim Chastela, they sang a whole night and a whole day. When the Rebbe came to the Fabrengen the next night, the first Nigan at the Fabrengen was the Nigan the Rebbe taught the night before. There were occasions where the Rebbe would re-sing it. Well, the Rebbe would sing it again the following night if he wasn't happy the way he was singing it and he would correct it and he would explain it and he would talk about it. But the Nigan dominated Labavitch. You know, like years later, the Nigan of Yeralef Nissen dominated our world. Then it was the Nigan that the Rebbe himself taught. So the Rebbe taught Stavya Pito many times. He sang it over and over until people got it. Each time the Rebbe said Chesh ben Tzedek, his face turned red like a tomato. It was incredible. Each time he said it, and I think at one point the Rebbe stopped. Who said does means men do? He was talking about Chesh ben Tzedek. He stopped in the middle of singing. This means you, and this means you, and this means you, and this means me, and this means you. He pointed at a number of people close to him, including himself, and said, "Does mean each one the Chesh ben Tzedek Adavati? I don't know what Avati means, but I guess it means you have to keep stuck." The Rebbe would say each time he said Chesh ben Tzedek, he would turn red in the face. No, when the Rebbe said Chesh ben Tzedek, he was misboining in what it means Chesh ben Tzedek, and you physically saw on his countenance the earnestness of Chesh ben Tzedek. Anyway, back to the Hayyim Yim. Tzichim La says Chesh ben Tzedek. Four lines from the bottom of the page. One must make a righteous, an accurate, an honest, a fair, a true, a tabulation. But Nafshim in one's neshava. Mikol Asher Over Alei B'Meshach Hashan All that's transpired during the preceding year Both in terms of what they did And what happened to them And listen to this V'leida to know Hamailis V'Aved Asa What's good about their Avoida And the Chachim Those things have to be strengthened As well as V'Esach Chesreinis Shabahem And the Chesreinis that they have in their person U B'Aved Asa And in their work There's two different categories Right Bahem means in themselves but Avedosa means in their work, and I'm going to say that Behem means me, this Tevis. And Avedosa means Tevis and Mitzvis. Letaknam, that those things need to be corrected. And he finishes, Da'yadeh Achana Tevis, where you have this good preparation, where you spend the time making a stock accounting of what's going on in your life. Zeichim, we merit Lishana Tevis, so a good and sweet year, Begashmi is both physically, or as well as spiritually. Do these words hurt or not? I guess it depends which part of your brain is working. <laughs> They're bothering me. You see, what's the most important component of this Hayyem Yem? I'm sure you'll ask 10 people to give you 10 different things. But from a study perspective, from a Limud perspective, the most important words are the words Mizman Lezman, third line from the top. Mizman Lezman, occasionally. If a person has a business and every single night he balances his books, a, he will bankrupt himself, and B, he will have a nervous breakdown from O, C, D, 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 D. You understand? You can't live like that. A person cannot constantly make cheshboinus. You make cheshboinus from time to time. It's critical. You, you, you have a plan, and you want to execute it. I, I, I am not a businessman. I've never been a businessman, and in all likelihood, I never will be. But business people suffer losses. It's part of business. And if you cannot appreciate that reality, you can't be a businessman. Suffering losses does not mean I'm losing. It means I'm building. But you have to have a mindset for that and a certain courage, a certain uh, ability to not be too overly apprehensive to have a business. So if you take stock every day, you'll drive yourself insane. Nuts. If you never take stock, you'll have no idea how, you, how much you're bleeding as they say in the culture and you won't even realize that you're doing that so there's a key component there's there is a time how often 
If you ask the tax man, I'll tell you every three months. <laughs> Mr. IRS, yeah, businesses don't get taxed once a year like we do. They get taxed every three months. Every business, I'm sure, is different. Every business, I'm sure, is different. But in Avodas Hashem, it's annually. Whatever business Yiddishkeit is, it's once a year. Hello. Now, the truth of the matter is, and you, sh- you, you probably are aware of this, you know this, that there's different layers to it. The first layer is Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, you take stock of the whole year. The second layer is what we call Yom Kippur cotton. What's Yom Kippur cotton? Erev Rish Chedesh. The day before Rish Chedesh is called Yom Kippur cotton. And there's actually Sichis for Yom Kippur cotton. Some people fast on that day. Every the day before Rish Chedesh is called Yom Kippur cotton. The third layer is Thursday night. Lel Shishi, Shabbos is Aesias Toshiv, Shabbos is the time for Tshuva. But Shabbos Aesias Toshiv is the higher Tshuva, the Tshuva coming closer to Hashem. So Thursday night and Friday is Tshuva Tata, to take stock to the lower Tshuva. And the fourth layer is every night by Kishma Shalamita, people who are in very high Madrigas. There are people in this world who can take a stock of their lives every single day and not go nuts. If, if you're very much in control of yourself and you actually grow from day to day, once a day is okay, but not once an hour and not once a minute. So you have layers, you understand? So the al talks about the Yetzal Tshuva. He, he actually talks about it in Tanya. Depending on who you are, your, your, your relationship, the way it's, it comes out in the Yetzal Tshuva is your relationship between bitterness and joy adapts, whether it's once a year, or it's once a month, or it's once a week, or it's once a day. And even if it's once a day, you do it in the morning, and or do you do it like we do it the night before. But in a different form, this is called Elul. Elul, you take stock of the whole year. You don't take stock every day. There's a season where you take stock, meaning to say, we all have Ruch Nizdik investments. We all have our Ruch Nizdik baseline you know, where we are. And then we have the challenges we give ourselves to grow in Ruchnius. Everybody has different challenges. Everybody is in a different place and in a different space. But we all want to stay alive. And the, we, the best way to stay alive is to grow. Like the Rebbe says, the sign of a living thing is growth. It's a sign of a living thing. There's another way to say it. The sign of a living thing is change. What's the difference between saying that the sign of a living thing is growth or the sign of a living thing is change? Because change could be good or bad. <laughs> Going towards more life or towards less life. So the Rebbe, Kedak Rebbe Kodesh, always spins it positive. The sign of a living thing is growth. Vax. You can't grow if you don't take a cheshbon. Take stock. Cheshbon tzedek. And the Rebbe says, the cheshbon tzedek is done once a year. Elo. It's a season for it. And this is how the Rebbe explained Elo. Elo is cheshbon. Chodesh ha Of course, you have the help of the king in the field. The Melach Basodeh. The king comes to the field to inspire the cheshbon and to help the cheshbon, but the cheshbon is ours. And the, you know, the, the famous Hayyem Yem, another Hayyem Yem, which goes along with a beautiful story, that Chaim Chetzrich Modas Chesrenes Atzmei Kach Chetzrich Modas Maile Satzmei. Just like a person has to know his flaws and his faults and his deficiencies, a person has to know his strengths and his positive attributes. When you make a cheshbon, I always tell the same story. One of my children, worked very hard on something. I'm not going to give you the specifics because I don't want you to know which child is. One of my own children. And he bombed. <laughs> he didn't do well. But I, I promise you he worked hard. He was so disheartened. He was so tzabrach bazich. So I, I remember working with him I said to him, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you going to grade yourself? Zero. So we, I talked him through it. There's no such thing as zero, and there's no such thing as 100. It just doesn't exist. It's some place between zero and 100. I said, listen, if you say you're a zero, you're lying. If you're saying you're a 100, you're also lying. There's not much difference between this lie and this lie. Why? Because neither are helpful. If you say you're a hundred, you love yourself. If you say you're a zero, you hate yourself. And we sort of, we're stuck in the zero. <laughs> this is our culture. This is our generation. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's being Russian or just being the Ikvis the Ikvis the Mashiach. Our tendency towards under-evaluating and under-estimating and under-expecting of ourselves is, is 
is is is a is a is what is the word? It's chronic. It's it's an illness. It's mishgas. It's a problem. It's best to deal with it. So I forced him to admit that he wasn't a zero. The minute he wasn't a zero, he didn't become a half. In his own judgment, he became a five or a six, because that's what he deserved. The the zero is not a judgment. It's a fee, it's an emotion of inadequacy. It's an emotion of I'm not good. You should know. You learn my modem. The talk about cheshbon. That's what they describe. My modem describe the the ill of yiush of despair. And one of the things my modem say very emphatically is when you say I am no good, you're lying to yourself. It's not only that it's not helpful, it's not even true. So the Maimodim say, when a person makes a cheshbon of his life and says, I'm no good, he's being lazy. He's being lazy. If you want to be honest, you cannot come to a conclusion that I have no good. Or to say it more precisely, you cannot come to the conclusion that there's not one piece of my life that has no good. Everything has good and bad. And this is one of the hardest things to do, to make an honest cheshbon. To make an honest cheshbon. Because only way, you see, the, what's the point of cheshbon? What's the point of the cheshbon? To go to the oil and leave a note? The point of the cheshbon is to go to the oil and leave a note. There's no question about that. But the point of the cheshbon is to grow. How could people grow if they hate themselves? How could people grow if they love themselves? For a person to grow, he has to know who he is. Know thyself. It's very important. Very sadistic. And my modem say, if you want to know yourself, break your life down into small pieces. And each piece into sub-pieces. The more you break it down, the more you specify vumahalt. First of all, the more you're good you'll discover. And the more realistic about the good that you're going to take on for the new year will be. And the number one reason people fail in Achlatas Tevis and good resolutions is that they're not realistic in their expectations. And the root of the not being realistic in their expectations is they're not realistic in their stock taking. And the root of the not being realistic in their stock taking is emotion, is feeling. I don't live my life on feeling, I live my life on actions. You know, I, I got into trouble with my kids last night, we had a whole argument. They had the marathon, the 24 hours about Chav Ches Nissen. So you one speaker, second speaker, third speaker. I, 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 I'm not, I don't like to criticize. It's not my cup of tea. It's such a stupid thing to do, to criticize. We live on hergation. You know that? We live on emotions. We must have them. As chassidim, hergation are very important. But the honest truth is, hergation is ungarnished. Feelings are nothing. Actions. It's not only that actions matter because that's what the Rebbe cares about. It's because the only thing that really makes us who we are is our actions. So when you, when you, when you engage in a lot of hergish, a lot of emotion, what are you doing? You're spinning your wheel. You're going around and around and around. New practical action. And practical action. What can I do? And what's interesting about it is our hergeshim are very important to us. They keep us very, very busy. They keep us in our chassidish space as much of our geshim, but they actually don't help us unless we spearhead them, unless we say, so what am I going to do? The hergeshim are a circle. You have to say, so what am I going to do? And the symptom or, or the cause for being able to take out of my cheshbon actions is that my cheshbon was about actions. Not about the hergation, but it's so hard when you're studying your life, especially if you're studying a whole year of your life, not to let emotion, and this is the right word, not to let emotion simplify and generalize your life. Anybody that comes to my classes knows that I say again and again and again, basically a pseudo-intellectual. Generalization is pseudo-intellectual. Reducing your life to one or two or three sentences. You know what pseudo-intellectual means? It's fake seichel. In Hasidus, it says in Eter, I didn't make it up. There's klal and prat. Klal is tayu. Prat is tikkun. 
generalizing is Alma Tayyip. It's infinity. You know what else it is? It's a baby. It's katnas. Prat is tikkun. It's not infinite, but it's developed. In Chesh ben Tzedek, the, the place where we make our biggest mistake is we think that how I feel about the Chesh ben is the Chesh ben, And it's not true. It's the actual measure of what I have achieved, right? Let's use a, the most ultimate measure and the most painful measure of all. I have 24 hours in a day and I have 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in each minute. How many of those did I use constructively? The answer is never zero and never a hundred. And sleeping is one of the things we need to do. And eating is one of the things we need to do. And hygiene is one of the things we need to do. But there's the efficient use of those things and there's the inefficient. So you make a judgment of your minutes. So the minutes that you did good, okay, the minutes that you wasted, but we're, what happens is we don't see the minutes that we did good as gains. We see the minutes that we did bad as losses, and then we come away with a negative emotion. And some people are the way around. They can waste 18 hours a day. What do you mean I did this? It's both the same disease. It's not that I'm, not, that I'm making a wrong chesh, but I'm not making a chesh. I'm letting a general emotion, which is one feeling, Defy my whole life, and it's never true. It's never true, and that's what Elul is about. Chesh bin Tzedek. The Chesh needs to be righteous. There's no such thing as I'm a failure. We're all Baruch Hashem successes. We could be bigger successes, and one of the parts of those successes is that we shouldn't hate ourselves so much. But it has to be measured in actions. It has to be measured in actions. Another Chav Nissen. It's 31 years, and this year the kviyas of the days of the week is exactly the same. I mean, who could forget that tzich? It was a Thursday night, like it is this year. Yeah, and I mean, and everybody wants this one. For me, in my stupid head, my simple head, there's one thing that's for sure. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Or, or what am I doing wrong? <laughs> what am I doing wrong? What does it mean, what am I doing wrong? That's the question. Why is the Mashiach? What am I doing wrong? That's not the question. What am I not doing? What am I doing wrong? How was that helpful? What am I doing wrong? I'm a grab young, I'm a chaza, I'm a oizvar. That's what I'm doing. I'm in Golis. What am I not doing? And what can I do? And that begins with establishing what I'm doing already. And finding a realistic place where I can make actionable corrections. This is, so we had, this became our Matzah Shabbat Malka, essentially. This is what happened. The, the, the camera was playing, and we were watching drosh after drosh, and we were, I'm not going to say we were screaming at each other, but it wasn't quiet in the room. But that's, that's so Yusoyedizik, it's so important, and it was always important. Chassidim who succeeded never got fogged by emotion in the way they assess themselves. Emotions are very important. You can't live with them. You can't live without them. But they're not who we are. They're a simplification. They're a pseudo-intellectual assessment of ourselves. And that's the Pnat Cheshbon Tzedek. So So the Rebbe says, and again, I'm repeating myself, the most important words in this entry is Mizman Lizman. You don't do it every day. But Elul is the time. Take stock. Break up your life into pieces. With your spouse, with your children, with your parents, with your neighbors, with your friends. You, the more you break it up, the more... Now, not everybody... You have to have a very big brain. I mean, to take stock of yourself, you have to have a very strong head. You have to push it remember. <laughs> we, we're not necessarily capable of remembering that many details. But whatever details we can break our life down into, we're able to be honest about where we're holding. And like I said, if the Cheshbon, the conclusion is zero, the Cheshbon is 100, it's a lie. It's something in between, and it's probably not one. It's four, it's five, it's six, it's seven, may even be eight. The Emes, Cheshbon Tzedek. And then we figure out what we're going to improve. Okay, let's read that Yem one more time, and I'll let you go. Cheshbon Elul, Cheshbon Elul. The month of Elul is the month of stock taking. The Kmai Begashmi is just like physically. He now is like a businessman, a person whose whole life is, is, is taking risks in order to profit. That's what business people do. They take risks in order to profit. To become a school teacher, you don't take risks. You don't profit. 
a businessman take risks. He could lose a lot, but he could also gain a lot. Says the Rebbe, For his investments, for his profits, for his business to be as they need to be, and there should be a lot of profit. It's necessary that from time to time, not every day, to take stock and to repair or to go in the direction of repairing all the things that are lacking. And the Rebbe continues, the same is also true in our spiritual service, and our serving HaKadosh Baruch. All year, all Yidin Oiskim are preoccupied, this is our business. Betayda, or mitzvahs, or oh, Midas Tevis, I find this so interesting. How does Midas Tevis land in the middle of Inyone Avoida? Because in the Inyone in Shatera in Sachsidis, right? The Rebbe wrote an essay on what is Chasidis. And on the very first page, he tells you four principles that are the keys to Chasidis. And they're all Ikrim. The whole point of the entire essay is to say there's no Ikrim tough. They're all equally important. The first is to wake a person up from a faint. The second is to be extra from behind the letter of the law. And the third is to refine the character of the person. And the fourth is to develop the mind. Those are the four things. To wake us up from a faint. Chosid said from the Fnimi Shurz to be extra from. To refine our character. And that we should have understanding of godliness in our brain. Those are the four things. And one of them is working on character. So the Rebbe Ayat throws it in here. So Bechedesh Elul, the month of Elul. That's the month of stack taking. Every single one of us. Each one according to our own measure. Whether we're a person who's fortunate enough and blessed enough to sit a whole day and a whole night and learn Tehidah. As well as those who are what they're busy with what's called the real world. It's a time for making a Cheshben Tzedek, a judgment which is righteous, honest. Benafshem in themselves. All that's passed during this preceding year. Number one, to know those things which are good, to make them better. And number two, the flaws that exist in themselves, in their own person, which I'm going to say means midas tevis. And their work, which I'm going to say means teno mitzvis, the them to repair them. And the Rebbe says, You need to have a chana, you have to have preparation. Zeichem, you merit l'shana tevam, you look at the good and sweet years, but gosh, it's a beruch, it's physical I'll tell you something interesting. Every Shabbos, a sicha comes out. Tevus benachem, they come out in beige. All the shows and Kranites get them. Uh, every week a sicha comes out. And it's, 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 it's not new tayra. It's chidash ayishanas. They're doing now the sichas. From 1975, I'm Tavshin Lamed Hey. So last Shabbos and this Shabbos and also next Shabbos is the Fabengen of Achan Shapesach of 1975, Tavshin Lamed Hey, which is what now it's, it's 47 years ago. And I try, Beli Neder, I try to learn. I think it's uh, when we were Bochum, you, you, you would go home without reading the Lukut Asichas. I try every week to learn the Sikh. It's a lot. And. Um, in this week's Sikhe, the Rebbe spoke about his capital. In 1975, the Rebbe turned 73 years old. So he was saying, Capital Ayindalad. So the nigga of that capital was Velikim Malki Mikedim. Velikim Malki Mikedim. There's another Mikedim earlier in the capital. I don't have a tilim in front of me. But the Rebbe speaks about Yitzhak Mitzrayim, Amat Anteira. And going into Eretz Yisrael, the, the beginning of that sicha was the beginning of that sicha was that Pesach has to do with miracles, and miracles have to do with Hashem's name Havaye Yud K Vav K Shem Havaye, and that Shem Havaye, which has to do with Pesach, do with miracles, is if when Hashem gave us the Torah. So the Rebbe asks the question. If Shem Avaya, as well as Shem giving us the Teda, how did we have Shem Avaya when we were leaving Mitzrayim? It's before Matan Teda. So the Rebbe says it's called Hechshel Mitzvah. But the din is that you're allowed to be Mechal Shabbos to do a Mitzvah, to make a bris, yeah? 
to make a bris on Mechal Shabbos, yeah? What about carrying the knife to make the bris? You could have carried the knife on Friday. So it's a Mechleik is Tanoim. The Lachas, you're not allowed. Not allowed. But according to one of the Tanoim, you are allowed. Not only are a lot of you Mechal Shabbos, do the mitzvah, you're allowed to do Mechal Shabbos. In other words, if you want to cook up the, uh, whatever it is, to prepare the medicine for the child before you do the bris, this is Mechleik is in whether you're allowed to do those things so the Rebbe says, Yetzias Mitzrayim is the Heksha Mitzvah Matan The reason we got Shem Havaya, not only when Hashem gave us the Teda, but we were leaving Mitzrayim, because it's the preparation for the Mitzvah of getting the Teda. So the Rebbe says here, the preparation for the new year is the Chesh, look at the words. You're preparing. Chaydesh Elul is a preparatory month. It's a preparatory. You're doing something in Elul so that the next year should be good. And they preparing, the idea of doing it ahead of time is a very good idea and a very, very helpful idea. Okay, I want to thank you for coming. I'll see you in a week.